topography of the history of brush fires that were here. A lot of people said, well, you just build a house, you build it according to, you know, build your specs. You said, wait a second, there's a possibility of fire here. How did you build your home to resist fire? Well, first of all, we didn't put any wooden features outside. We considered the fire, the worst case scenario, even the fire comes through, the flames comes through our house, house will not be affected. All the eaves are covered with plaster, not just the stuff, a plaster, an inch and a three quarter thick plaster, all the way to the roof, all the way under the eaves, and the sidings, everything is uh, plaster. My roof is a lightweight clay that's fire resistant. So it's the whole house is sealed, and inside even the windows are the highest grade windows that fire can resist as much as we can. Bottom line, it's made not just to resist flame, but the heat blast, the thermal energy coming at the house. Absolutely, absolutely. The thermal energy, uh, the walls, mind you, it's not a two by four, it's four by uh, two, uh, two by sixes. And inside, the insulation is double. So you literally... Double, yeah, double the requirement insulation. Uh, everything was much, much uh, more excessive than what the city requires. You, oh, this is, you overbuilt this house. I did. I, I did that with a conscience, with knowing that I'm overbuilding it. As it is, then, then comes, that's the house itself. You made that fire resistant as much as you possibly city says 200 feet of brush pits. You said 200 feet and you shook your head and said no. How far did you go back? I went back 600 feet to a position where firefighters can freely and comfortably take position and extinguish the approaching fire. And that's exactly what happened. And in this case, the fire was coming over the hill right at you, but in a way, you weren't worried when you saw the fire coming at you. No, I was calm. When uh, fire, uh, the firemen came here, they, they weren't uh, oriented to the area. So it was at night, 2 a.m., when they knocked on our door for evacuation, I was already up. My uh, pets were secured in cages. My wife was ready. It was all pre-planned. And my wife took the car. She rescued all the pets, even chicken, roosters, dogs, parrots, everything. And I stayed behind. I only started giving them the orientation. I have uh, prepared already the uh, garden hoses to feed their fire engine because we don't have a fire hydrant up here. I had strategically placed already all kinds of projectors, even solar lights. I showed them where the electric panel is. It was open for them to turn the switches off anytime they want. Where the gas uh, meter is, we had the key on the on the switch, to, on the valve to turn it off. Everything was ready. I was just giving them orientation. I was assisting them so they know the territory, they know the uh, area. So when the flame arrives, they are ready to fight. So they don't lose time or get lost. Where is what? Other people have built in this area. They have clearance of their need, whatever. But if somebody is going to build a home or live up in this zone, what advice would you give them to prepare their home for fire if they've got an established home? But what steps can they take to say, I want to be safe, I want to be secure? What advice would you give them? Clearance, clearance, clearance. Brush clearance. Go and do it beyond the required time. Uh, it's required to clear at least once a year. From the uh, starting the summer until end of the fall, we never stop the clearance. Because we get results now and then, and the brush grows again. We clean it again. I have, a, I have helpers crews that every year we do it at least three, four times beyond our uh, required limits. If you have things at your home which can assist firefighters, like you know, hoses with, or, or you know, main outlets with, with water that comes up to your house, or if you have a swimming pool or something like that, would you advise people to spend a little time, get extra equipment, pumps, things like that, to help the firefighters do their jobs? Absolutely. I have uh, 
uh, purchased $100 each 275-gallon liquid containers that are recyclable. They're heavy plastic containers. I don't waste any water here. All the rainwater are contained in, in those containers and ready for an emergency situation. Fire so, or anything else? Fire or anything else, even for my plants, for example. Uh, my house is built, we don't have a sewage, we have a septic tank. Yeah. But when I built, I diverted all the gray water towards my plants and trees. So I take a shower, my trees get water. I use I use biodegradable soaps in the entire world. When you look at what needs to be done, because we are going to have more fires. We are in fire season. The next fire could be next week, tomorrow, five minutes from now. Your advice to people beyond clearances, you should be thinking about what that fire could do to attack your home. Yes, absolutely. If in case you don't have uh, you go to work, unlike me, my work is here also, by the way. Put high the strongest possible sprinklers on a meter. They even have switches that from it, it, it just automatically opens the sprinklers. Let the sprinklers run. Do it remotely. Do it remotely if you can. We have the technology now. Uh, do the sprinklers run. Contain as much as rainwater if you can, and just uh, make sure you have enough supply in your home constantly. Bottom line, if somebody is here, they should be able to direct firefighters and say, we're prepping right now, we're soaking everything down, so that when the firefighters get here, when the fire approaches, they've already got literally a head start? Absolutely. 90% of firefighting is the preparedness. <laughs> For firefighters, this was a hard one. It was that easy because everything was ready. The garden hoses were ready, more than enough. Uh, there were enough solar projectors around the house to light up the whole area. Uh, I had enough uh, supplies for them, Gatorade and other drinking uh, supplies, so they are stay fit. Uh, Did you have a hard time getting the firefighters to leave? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, before they left, we had, a, we had a little party. I uh, provide them with some Armenian food, and uh, they were happy. They said, you're leaving. I wish every firefighting comes uh, with, when they face a fire, uh, fire call, they find something like here. That'll do it, not a problem. Yeah, that's, that's the key on this thing is, again, there, there's, a, there's an American military expression, proper previous preparation prevents piss poor performance. That's what you've done. Wonderful. It's it, it works. And again, it's, it's the thing here where you know, you're at the top of the hill. Fine, the fire's going to come at you with six inches. You know, I, I knew a gentleman who was a uh, it passed on God knows years ago, but he built a home up in Sierra Nevada. So he was a retired colonel in the Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, he knows what to do. His home was twelve was, was twelve inch thick, twelve inch thick oh, concrete, yeah. and he had windows, but he had steel shutters that yes. closed and locked from the inside. And he had ventilation set up and everything else. And bunker. he had a basement, bunker, he had a bunker basement down there. And when they said, oh, the force is going to burn, he says, not a problem. I've got the cars and the thing here that's locked and all that type of stuff and everything else. And so they warned him and he said, fine, I'll be fine. He called his two sons, they came on up. He sat down in the basement, they played pool. And they, you know, watched it and everything else like that. They waited for the fire to burn over. The fire burned over. It's like these hills. It looked like the moon. He went outside and said, okay. Went to the garage, opened it up, took out a paint compressor, dumped in 25 gallons of paint, put it up, fired it up, sprayed the outside of the house, looked brand new. <laughs> and everyone just goes, what happened to the fire? The fire oh, it burned all the way around. Didn't touch home. Again. What's to burn? Exactly. What's to burn? You're not, in this exactly. case, you're not giving anything for this thing to burn at all. And even the fuel you have. Oh, yeah. Five, six hundred. Oh, yeah. There's no fuel. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you know, even what's on the ground there. What's on the ground, a little straw like that, you can handle that with a garden. Oh, so that's, that's not a problem. Right. And that's how I did. That's exactly what I did. I got little burns here and there, but yeah. no big deal. Yeah. That'll work. Uh, 
I'm sort of I'm sort of laughing. I'm gonna take a picture of the house, take a picture of you from my Twitter feed. Oh, okay. you know, you're looking good. He says, what? Me? What? <laughs> Hang on for a second. Let me grab a picture or two. Okay. Uh,